In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to enable or disable a module, which looks like that, or a smoke detector, which can look like that. Now, we're going to be doing this on a Notifier NFS23030, or you could do this on the NCA2. Now, the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is figure out which uh, device we're going to enable or disable. You should already know which device this is. Um, if you know which detector head it is, you can just take the detector head off the base and look on the back. Or there should be like a label on it somewhere that says what the uh, address is. If it's a module, you can take the cover off and look at the dials. Now to figure out which loop it's on, which that's what this is right here, this is a loop card. It should say on the uh, device itself, but if it doesn't, you kind of look at the wiring and figure it out yourself. There's not really a way to easily figure that out without making the device go into trouble or alarm or something like that. Now the first thing we're going to do is go to an enunciator, like an NCA2 or the main keypad here. And we're going to press main menu and program alter status. Now you're going to need to have the passcode for the programming account or an account that has permission to enable or disable devices. Now once you have the password put in, you can go ahead and press accept. And a trouble is going to come up on the panel. You can acknowledge that on a different enunciator if you have one. So if I zoom in on the keypad here, you can see all the different options in the programming menu. Now if you're in a lower level account, you're only going to see alter status. We're going to go ahead and press that button right there. And you're going to see disable slash enable. We're going to press that. And this is where we enter in what device it is and where it is. Now the first thing I have to do is figure out what type of device that I'm going to be disabling. Right now it's a detector, but if we're disabling a module, we can press this button once and it's going to scroll down to a module. Now if it's something else like a uh, voice circuit or something like that, you can scroll through until it's the type of device that you're trying to disable. There's lots of different options. In this tutorial, I'm just going to be showing disabling a module, which it looks like I just scrolled past. There we go, there's a module. Now next, you're going to figure out what node it is. Now if you're on a system without a DVC or an enunciator or other panels or anything like that, and there's nothing plugged into the NUP port, then your panel is probably node 0. If you have a cable plugged into the NUP port, or there's a DVC or an enunciator or anything like that, then it's going to be something other than zero. Now there's no way to really know what node it is. You kind of have to know how the system was designed. Um, it might say on the door or on the keypad or something. It might even be programmed on the main display. So in my case, this is node number one. And you're going to have to figure out what loop it is. This should be marked on the device. If it's not, you're going to have to look at the documentation. Now the last thing we're going to do is go ahead and select the actual address. Now in my case, I'm going to be doing device number three which is the monitor module for a pull station and I'm going to press accept and it's going to go into the screen right here now this is just going to show some details about the device we're going to go ahead and press disable right here and it's going to ask are you sure you have to hit yes and it's disabled now if we want to disable more devices we're going to press back and just select more devices but we're not so we're going to go ahead and keep pressing back until we get to the main menu. Now it's going to beep because there's a trouble now. As you can see, it says disabled right there, monitor. And if we go over to the lights, as you can see, there's a point disabled light. And if we go over to the module here, as you can see, the light has stopped blinking, which is kind of another way to make sure that you have actually successfully disabled the module. Now if we go over to the pull station right here, we can go ahead and pull it. And as you can see, nothing happened. You can go ahead and reset this. So now we're going to go ahead and show you how to re-enable a device. So we're going to go ahead and go into the main menu, program slash alter status, and enter your password. This is the same password used to disable the device. And press accept. And now press alter status, and then enable disable. And you're going to go ahead and select the exact same thing as before. So module, node number one, loop one, module three. And then press accept right there. And you will see the same screen. But instead of disable, you're obviously going to press enable. And it just enables. And you're obviously going to want to make sure the device is not an alarm because the panel will go into alarm if the device is an alarm when it re-enables. But 
luckily ours is not. So we're going to go ahead and press escape back to the main screen. And you can see that there are no troubles. And if we go back over to the device, it is blinking. And if we pulled the pull station, it would go back off. I'm not going to do that right now since I have some very loud speakers connected. So that's how to disable or enable a device on an NFS-23030. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Now my next video is going to be how to add a device on the SLC circuit. So if you want to see that, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell button. And make sure you like the video and leave a comment. Thanks for watching.